Start verse 1. <coughs> 17 and 1. Alright, we get there, say amen. You're already there for the screens? Or... Alright. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. Verse 2. Boom. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be, called, shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Keep going. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my co co covenant, sorry, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and, and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh, and your foreskin that shall be signed the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised every male, a uh, child of your generations. He who is born in your house or brought, bought with money from any foreigner who is not of your descendant. Who is born in your house, and he who is, who is bought with your money shall be circumcised. And my covenant shall be uh, in your flesh and for an everlasting covenant. We're almost done. And the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh or his foreskin, that, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. Verse 16. And I will bless her also and give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. King, uh, kings of peoples shall be from her. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said, In his heart, shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old, and shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. And God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and, this, and with his descendants after him. Almost done, guys. And for, as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, will make him fruitful, will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at a set time next year. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. I thank you that we're able to be here, God, tonight, together, gather together one more time in your presence. And God, help us to be the best that we can be for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everybody said amen. 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 <clears throat> I preached you for just a little bit, but where am I? Where am I? In the great scheme of things, where are you? Yes. I ask you this morning, and I'll ask you again. Fiona asked us, and I said, well... I told you I had to about leave the conference because she hurt my feelings because she stepped on my toes. And I was being Pentecostal, so I had to leave the meeting. She asked us, is outside of the church's four walls, when's the last time you want somebody to the Lord? And so I started thinking about that. And in the grand scheme of things, and, and I know that uh, many churches... Um, I, let me just throw this at you. Many churches, they will have you fill out a card or click a screen if you 
committed your life to Christ. And I don't know how many of those are actually true. I don't know how many of those are actual conversions. I don't know how many how many lives were actually changed with that. Because uh, I could go to the screen right now and click yes, and they would count that as a conversion, but I've already been converted. And so I, I have issues with those, with the counting system. I have, a, I have a way to, I just have issues with the way that that the modern church uh, counts yeah. salvations, I guess is the only way I can think of that. I don't know how else to put that. Uh, converts, uh, I don't know how we, how, what the correct way of saying that is, but... Uh, because as long as we, so a lot of people, as long as they raise their hands, they say, welcome to the family of God, and there's no, been no conversion. Yeah. There's been no transference from life to death, death to life. I mean, there's been no, there's been no real commitment to Christ given. It's just been a raise of a hand, uh, a point of a finger, welcome to the family of God. I, I have issue with that. And I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing church, listen. There's churches that have hundreds of people saved a year. We haven't had hundreds of people saved in 25 years here. So just help me with that. Okay? So I, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing or pointing fingers. I'm just saying I'm, this is my preference. I have an issue with that. Okay? And, and the reason I say that is to say this. I wonder where we are uh, in church, in our church. Are we covenant people? Or are we just kind of going through the motions of stuff that we are just trying to get through in life today? Are we just trying to make it another Sunday? Can I, can I be transparent? Yeah, the, we were talking at the conference that I went to uh, Friday. When did I go? Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Friday. Friday and, uh, what is today? Sunday, okay. Friday. All right. Uh, the guy that was, that was speaking Friday night. Him and his wife had been married 47 years. He started the church in 1980, and there was like six of them in a hotel conference room. So a guy uh, was asleep in the conference room. They had oversold the hotel. They had to move him out. So they got a church. It was, he said it's crazy, uh, but um, he had he was ministering and he was speaking to us about about God being faithful and, and where where church was and where it is and uh, how church has changed so much in his 47, 50 years of ministry. You know, I like I like listening to older preachers. Yeah. Yeah. I know the new guys have skinny jeans and they're all hip and they have, you know, they have biceps and they have like jackets. And, stuff. and they're good too. But I, but I like guys that have been through something at least once or maybe 25 times. You know, and, and they, they have tire tracks over their body where they've been ran over and, and they have scars and they have, um, you know, they have a limp, yeah. you know, uh, and it's not because they're, they're pimping, it's just because they're limping. And uh, so they've been beat up and, and they, they've been through some stuff. And I like listening to older preachers who who have not given up the faith and who have not quit and have, have kept going when all else fails, they just kept going. And when people talked about it, they just kept going. When, when someone said, you can never do that, they said, okay, I'll just do it anyway. And I, 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 like, I like listening to ministers um, like that. I like listening to older ministers that have been through something. Because, you know, it, it's really cool to go to conferences and you have the hip guys and they're all, you know, it's all great. And, you know, their life is wonderful and they never had a problem. And, yeah, whatever. But the truth of the matter is this. I say, can I be transparent, right? My wife's just singing up a storm right there in the nursery, man. She, she's a guy, okay? Um, the truth of the matter is this. If you talk to real ministers and real preachers and not ones that are fake and phony, they will tell you sometimes at the end of Sunday night they go, thank God that's over. Yeah, I know. I True. You know why? Because we've got through it, man. Another week. We got through another week without quitting. Let me just share this with you. 1,500 preachers quit every year in the United States of America. 1,500 pastors quit every year. Never to return back to ministry. Give me another statistic. We close 3,000 churches a year in the United States of America. 3,000 close. Not near that many. 
We close 3,000. Our, our organization right now, we are preacher poor. We have open churches that we've had to sell because there's nobody to go in there. There's nobody to take the pulpit. The first thing they ask is how much does it pay? How many people there and how much does it pay? That's the first questions we get when I'm sitting on that board. Thank you, Pastor. How much does it pay and how many people go to church there? And we say, zero and zero. Get a job. <laughs> There's a grocery store in town that would love for you to sack groceries for somebody. I promise you. Stock shelves. There's something you can do in that town. If you're really called to a place, there's something for you to do, I promise you. There's always times when we feel like we've been left behind. Church, where are we? I, I've always felt 10 years behind. I don't know why. I just always feel that way. When it seems that we're not in the right place for God to bless us. I can't be blessed because this is going on in my life. I'm going to share some things with you that were going on in Abraham's life and God still blessed them. You are, hmm, how can I say this? God chooses whom he will. And God does what he does. Uh, God lays his hand on Abraham for whatever reason. It could have been somebody else, but God chose Abraham. We sometimes think that God blesses other people, but lets us be on our own. Have you ever felt that way? Why is it that God, God, why is it that they have always had the perfect little marriage? God, why is it they've always had the 1.3 kids? They've had, uh, they've had the, the $150,000 home with a white picket fence. They've got two vehicles. Uh, they've got a boat. They've got a, they've got a lake house. They've got all this stuff. And God, I can't find two pennies to rub together to go get a Dr. Pepper at Sonic. Right. Right. Why is that, God? Why is that? Listen, it sometimes it seems like God blesses other people, but let me just share some things with you here in a minute. It's, it, it, it's far from the truth that God does not care for you. But if somebody ever, if the devil ever comes to you and says, God doesn't care for you, that's a lie. Get that out of your head immediately because that's not true. Don't you know that if, if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are now a child of God, and being a child of God means that you are now an heir to the, of the promises of of Abraham. Yeah. Amen, Abraham. Yeah. Church, I, I just want you to understand who you are. How many have ever heard the little song, all the blessings, uh, all the blessings of Abraham are mine, every chapter, every verse, every line? Okay. That wasn't just a made-up song to make little kids be a quiet nursery. That was an actual, they, they made that song so you could remember that all the, all the, all Abraham's blessings are mine, every chapter, every verse, every line. I read you just a few of them. Go, go back and read it and see, where, see what lineage you actually have. Listen, you have the right to share in the blessings of God through a covenant that you did not make right. Amen. in a time that you were not born and the price that you did not pay. Amen. I have a right to step into the, those blessings that God has given me, not because I'm so good and not because I'm 175,000 years old and not because I, I, uh, I, was, I was there when Abraham made a covenant. I was there when God said, Jeff, will you, will you accept me as your Savior? And I said, you betcha, buddy. Amen. Let's do this. And that automatically qualified me for the blessings of Abraham because I am now in the lineage of Abraham through a spiritual lineage. I am no longer just a Gentile, but I'm a Gentile saved by the grace of God through my faith in Jesus Christ. I am now able to, to, to stand and say, I'm part of the covenant. That's right. Amen. What is the covenant? Walk before me and be perfect. Oh. Come on. Come on. That's tough. That's right out of the box. Number two, I will make my covenant with you and me. Okay, God, I got that one. Number three, I will multiply you exceedingly. D. Number four. Father of many nations. This is this is God's covenant with Abraham. Six. Five. Five. Changed his name, exalted father, to father of nations. Six. I'll make you fruitful. Seven. Make nations from you. Eight. Kings will come from you. Nine. Everlasting covenant between him and his seed. 
Who's in the covenant? I'm in the covenant. Amen. All those who were either born of Abraham in the flesh or those who were born again in Christ are in the covenant. If you have your Bible, turn to Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 through 29. I want to prove that to you in Scripture. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law. Kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore the law is our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, hang on just a minute. I'll stop. We gloss over this verse and verses like it like it's not a big deal. Right. That's right. Because we as Christians, we understand, hallelujah, that we are children of God. We understand that, right? Yeah. Talk back to me. Okay. <clears throat> so we read these verses, oh, you're all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, no kidding, guys. I got that. No big deal. But before we could do this, it was a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was through faith in Jesus Christ that I could become a son of God. Before that, I was not able to do any of it. I, I was not able to be saved yeah. right. because I was not Jewish. Right. Yeah. I was not able to be in line with God because I, I am not of Jewish descent. I was not able to be what God has called me to be because I was not of Jew of Abraham's lineage. I was not part of the covenant because I was not of Abraham's lineage. But through faith in Christ Jesus, I became a son of God. Okay, 27. I thank you for your your time. Okay. For as many of you that were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay. Oh, my eyes are about to bleed. Okay, listen. Listen. As many of you who were baptized into Christ. What is baptism? Submerged, immersed. Absolutely soaking wet through him. As many of you that were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Someone ought to just shout around the aisle right no. there. Okay. There's, the Jew, there's neither slave nor free. Right. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. This, verse 29 is the last one, right? Thank you. And if you're Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Yeah. And, and what? And what else? Break it in. Who would have thought that? That's a buddy word right there, okay? Break it in. Okay. And so, and heirs according to the promise. If you are a Christ, not that you're a Christ, but you belong to Christ, the apostrophe S means you belong to that. Right. Okay? It doesn't mean that you are a Christ, you belong to Christ. Then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Amen. What? So Galatians 3.29 just told me that because Abraham was blessed of God, guess who's blessed of God? Because Abraham has all these things that God promised him, guess who gets all those promises in his life? I do. I do. All those who were either born of Abraham in the flesh or those who were born again in Christ are in the covenant. All who, call, all who God calls His children are in the covenant. Can someone just say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I am not the Son of God, but I am a son. I am a son of the living God. I, have the, I am in the covenant that God has set up with Abraham. How does the covenant help me? I'm so glad you asked. My life is a mess. 
and it doesn't seem to be working for me. Have you ever thought that? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. God, you can't bless me. Like my life is a mess. Right. You can't. Well, number one, let's review. Have you given your life to Christ? I didn't say you raised your hand. I didn't say you walked down to an altar. I didn't say you cried in an altar. I didn't say five people laid hands on you and spit and their, and their bad breath was in your bed. You were not trying to... I've been in church a long time. Okay. And I, I didn't say four people were holding up this arm and three people were holding up this arm and you were spitting and slop. I didn't say any of that. I said, did you give your life to Christ? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Did you give your life to Christ? Not your heart. Yeah. Oh. Your soul. Yes. Yes. Or whatever part we used to say we, to say we are saved. Not, not, not just that, but do, do you give your life to Christ? Woo, come on, somebody. Come on, I feel like preaching just a little bit. Preach on. Listen, your life, Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 11. Listen. And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Keep going, 12. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Go back to verse 11. I'm going to just say something real fast. This right here is what the church is supposed to be doing. Amen. Yes. Amen. Apostles. Prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Apostles, prophets. Ready? Ready? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Apostles, prophets. Yeah. Teachers, remember? Get your ear. Your little fingers don't want to get your ear. Why aren't you fat? And so, an evan I mean, a prophet grabs you. Grabs you. Right? A prophet. An evangelist points the way. No, I'm sorry, apostle, prophet. Evangelist points the way. Then there's pastors who have the ring finger. Those are the closest to God, right? And the teachers can be here. This is what the church is supposed to do. Verse 12. What are we supposed to do? Equip the saints for the work of ministry. I'm not supposed to do this by myself. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, I've been pastoring for a while. I'm just figuring this out. <coughs> that I'm not supposed to make every hospital visit. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I'm not. Yeah. I appreciate David sending out texts yeah. and people. And like, I appreciate it. But you have, you, have not, you have no idea, David, how much that takes off of my right. plate. Yeah. And I appreciate it very much. I don't know if I've ever told you that, but I appreciate that. that and then he's always making sure I know what's up. Hey, did you know? Yeah, okay, well, I'll send that out. I'll make sure you know before I send it out. And so, it's not that I don't know, but David has a list, man. He just sends it, and it goes out, and this is wonderful. It, and I, I really appreciate that. But I'm not supposed to do this by myself. Right. We're supposed to be equipping the, the saints for the work of ministry. Amen. <laughs> not just ministering the saints. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Let's go on. I'm, verse 13. I stopped. I got, I got lost. I got, sorry. Verse 13. Sorry. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. Keep on. That we should no longer be children. Mm. Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. I love it. Paul said, grow up. That's right. Grow up. Just because it's shiny, it'll fall. Right. Just because it doesn't get you crucified, doesn't mean it's right. You can deny all you want to. It won't get you crucified. Eventually it will. Not right now. Tossed and fro carried out with everyone of doctrine. By the trickery of men. And the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Right. Keep going. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him 
Who is the head? Christ. Verse 16. That's the last one. For whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Listen. Have you given your life to walk perfectly in the body of Christ before God? You have to check these things out. Hagar and Ishmael. Do you have a Hagar and Ishmael hanging out there? Abraham's wife had only one, Abraham's wife and only son for 13 years. He had to let go. Yeah. Not his wife, but anyway. Yeah. Genesis chapter 16, verse 2. Genesis 16, verse 2. Sarah said to Abraham, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into the hand of perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarah. Yep. For the only time that he ever, the only son he had for 13 years was Ishmael. He taught him how to do everything. And I know you've heard me say it before. But he taught him how to do everything. He taught him to be a young man. He's 13 years old. And he had taught him how to do everything in, our, in, in his life. And now all of a sudden, he had to, had to let him go. Guys, can I tell you something? Some things in your life that you love? There's some people in your life that you love that you have to let go. Not because you hate them, but because they're killing you. They're dragging you down. Now don't you go out of here and divorce your husband. And say you're killing me and dragging me down. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, Casey just now left Steve and took the money. It's going to be all right, baby. We're with you, okay? We'll walk, we'll walk, just walk with you, okay? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Breathe on me, Jesus. Spread it. Okay. I'm going to get up here. Alright. Some people in your life you gotta let go. <clears throat> But now, Brother Jeff, you just told us today that we need to go out and get the one. Yeah, but maybe they ain't the one. Maybe they're not your one. Maybe they're somebody else's one, but maybe they're not your one. Don't put yourself in danger of losing your soul. Or somebody else. You go out and tell them about Jesus, and that's fantastic. But, but don't, don't lose your own soul in, in, in getting someone else to come to the kingdom. Yeah. Don't do that. Right. Listen, and, and in 16 and 2, um, Ishmael did not act correctly towards Sarah and Isaac, and they were shown the door. They were given bread and water and sent into the desert to die. <coughs> and God heard the cry because of Ishmael, the seed of Abraham. Regardless if he was the chosen seed or not, he was the seed. Regardless if he was the chosen to have to carry on the lineage, it didn't matter that Abraham was still his father. And the covenant was still in effect because of his father. You with me? We have a constant battle in the Middle East. Ishmael and Isaac. Have been fighting year after year after year after century after century. Because the Muslims will say that Ishmael is the right heir because he's the firstborn. And God said, I don't care if he's born first or second. He's not of Sarah. And if he had been born of Sarah, then Ishmael would be. But he's Hagar's baby, not Sarah's. And so we have this constant battle going on. And the, and, and the angel of the Lord heard the cry of, of, of Ishmael because what Hagar had done was, was set her baby under a tree and she'd gone a, a bow shot away, however far a bow shot is, so she didn't have to watch her son die because the water dried up and the bread was gone and they were just going to die in the, in the wilderness. And the angel of the Lord showed up and said, Hey, y'all, what y'all doing out here? Come with me. And took them to another place. 
They were blessed because of the covenant. Amen. Genesis 21, start with verse 14. I know I'll throw a lot of scripture at you, but you'll be all right. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and skin of water, putting on her, sho on, on her shoulder and gave it and the, and the boy gave it to, and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. You don't have to go through all that. I just wanted to get to where we're at, where the story's at, okay? Yeah. You may not be where you thought you should be right now. Maybe, maybe you thought that God had greater plans for you than right now what you're going for. Maybe, maybe your life was supposed to have another trajectory. You thought it was going to go straight up and just keep going up. And all of a sudden it was straight up and then it plateaued. And then it declined. And then it went up again and then it plateaued. Then it declined. And all of a sudden, now you're second guessing God. God, I don't know if this is where you want me to be. And you, you may not even be where you want to be. Maybe you're not happy in the ministry that you're in. Maybe you're not happy in where, where God has you to be right now in your life. And maybe you're not content. Be content you're maybe you're not happy to be right here. And as Brother Dean said, and Paul writes, be in whatsoever situation you're in, be content. Right. It doesn't mean settle. Right. It means this is where God has me right now, and this is what I'm going through right now. Right. I'm going to be, I'm going to be all right. I know there's better for me. Listen, no, I'm almost done. Listen, you may not be where you want to be. You, you may have gotten here because of your choices. Maybe you were headed up, and your choices caused you to head down. And God would begin to raise you up again and you'd make bad choices again and you'd start to head it down again. Yep. Maybe you're not exactly where you thought you would be at the age you are right now. Yeah. And maybe you thought you'd be further down the road than you are now at 50 years old or 40 years old or 25, whatever. And you thought, maybe I could, if I could just get back on track. I would, I would, God, if I could just get back on track. And I share with you, where you are is where you are. Amen. Be where your feet are. Amen. Come on, what's that mean? Be where your feet are. This is what that means. Quit wishing for tomorrow or, or morning last or morning that. Where are you right now? Quit wishing. Oh, if I could, I wish I could, I wish I could. I didn't say stop dreaming. I said stop, stop wishing where I could be further down the road and stop lamenting your past and be where your feet are. Where are you? Right now, where is your head? I'm right here. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. God hears his people of covenant. I have given my life to Christ. He has to hear me. Come on, somebody. I have given my life to Christ. Not my heart. Not, not just part of it. I cleared the table. God, there's nothing. There's nothing. That you can't have. Right. What is it you want me to put on the table? Right. What is it, God? Is, is whatever I, I've cleared the table, God. You tell me what to put on it. Right. And that's where I'll go. Right. That's what I'll do. I've given my life to Christ. He has to hear me. He will bless you in the middle of what seems to be everybody else to everybody else the biggest mess in history. Amen. He will bless you and everybody else says, I can't believe that they did that and God is blessing them because it has nothing to do with your perception of you. It has to do with, with, with your covenant with God. Amen. It has nothing to do with who they think you are. It has to do with who you know you are. Yes, it doesn't matter who everybody else calls you. What did he say about you? Yes. I am a covenant. I am a covenant. He hears his people. He will bless you in the middle of what seems to be a, a mess beyond repair. He will open your eyes to a well of refreshing water that you couldn't see when you were looking at a desert. Amen. Come on. Hagar was looking at a desert. I, I didn't want to read all that. But Hagar was looking at a desert, looking at, a, at death, yeah. looking at certain failure. And an angel showed up and said, there's a well right here. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I didn't see it. And it wasn't because.
because she was so special. It was because her son was in covenant with Abraham. Yeah. Call somebody. Come on, somebody. When the water is spent, the child is dying. When you have come to the end of yourself, that is when the covenant goes into effect. Amen. When the water is done, your baby is dying spiritually. Come on. Okay? Come on. The thing that God has birthed in you, that spiritual birth thing inside of you, the thing that God's called you to do, and you don't know why, but you just can't seem to get it out. Yeah, you wish God would induce you. <laughs> get the salad spoons out. Whatever. Get this thing out of me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whatever. <laughs> I've got to have this thing Amen. out of me. Right. And it doesn't seem like anybody has ever had any faith or confidence in you. But God said, you're in covenant with me. Amen. Not just with them. Right. I'm in covenant with you because we're in the same church. Amen. So how I affect you and you affect me, whether you like it or not. That's right. right. It's true. Yeah. How your life is reflects on me. Right. And how I live my life reflects on you. Right. Yeah. Amen. Regardless of what you do. You don't have to. You don't have to. Listen. He hears you when you call. He'll send his angels to minister to you. There's not one soul that doesn't belong to the Lord. That's Ezekiel 18 and 4. All souls belong to the Lord. Do you know the devil's never made a soul? He's never breathed life into anything. He's never. He's never brought life. That's right. Only God can do that. Listen, I'm almost done. There are those who are in covenant with him. And there's those who are not. Which one are you? Are you in covenant with God or are you just wishing? You? Have you given your life? Or you have just given your heart? Listen. And I'm not going to ask you to write it down or raise your hand or whatever. To take inventory of your life. Right. What percentage of you do you hold back from God? What percentage? 5%? 3.6, 9, 7, 4? 42%? I give God half of me, a little over half. Well, God, I'll give you this section of my life because I need help in this area, but God, I don't need you in any other part of my life. But I, I, I just need this part. <clears throat> What, what part do you hold back from God? Yes. Because if it's any part, and I'm not there yet, guys. I'm working on me. I, I try to put everything on the table, and then I'll try to sneak something off. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll put the keys. God has the keys to my life. Yeah. Hey, God, what's that? Yeah. You know? Right. And I'll try to take some keys back. Right. Now, you can have the key to my truck. Because I don't want to do that anymore anyway. You can have the key to my mother's house because I need help with her. You can have a key to that little bitty loft that, I, that was on my shed that's not even there anymore. I you can have the key to the loft that goes to the back of my truck so nobody steals the stuff out of the back. I don't want to park it that anymore. You have the key to my house because I need you to bless my home. Yeah. I need you to bless my home. <coughs> you bless my children. Bless me. Bless my wife. Yeah. She needs yeah. it. <laughs> you have the key to my church. Because my church needs you, God. Yeah. My church needs you. Amen. My church needs you, God. They need you to, they need, they need you to pour into me so I can pour into them. You can, have, you can have the key to the old the old block that used to be on our warehouse. It's not there anymore. I'm not the <coughs> or you can have the key to the warehouse, God, because you need to bless my business. I make money so I can support my family. So I can support the church so we can build that building out there, God, right? Right. Come right. on. But God, you can't have the key to my van or the fall to my van. There's another church key, God. You can have that part of the church. 
<laughs> but let me have the other one. Because yeah. I know how to handle that better than you do. There's another key to my mother's house. <coughs> Gosh, she's doing okay today. I don't really... Just... It's okay. The key to my house. Father. <laughs> we still need up there, so I'll give you that key. Amen. Good. There's a key to the lock of the gate of our new building. God, I need you to bless that, but it's not, since it's not open yet, God, I don't need you there right now. We're going to hang on to that. And I take, I take those keys that I put in my pocket, and I don't put them on the, I don't put them on the table. And Heike, what happens is this, is God says, you know, when you get tired of running your own life, yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. when you get tired of that box being in the ditch, right. when you get tired of wrecking everything that you touch. Yeah. Can I have those keys, please? Yeah. Yeah. Can I have those keys? Yeah. Because until you give it to him, you can't be in God. You can't be in covenant. Right. Right. The things you hold back are not in covenant. Right. There was it you that told me that your was it your cousin or your <laughs> that told you that I have to say that God loves your children more than you love your children. And I think about that all the time. And I think about this a lot. <clears throat> that when I don't give God my children, I'm saying, God, I know how to bless them better than you know how to bless them. Right. I, don't know, I know how to care for them better than you know how to care for them. Because as a pastor, and as a Pentecostal Church of God pastor, kid, and, and all, the, all the guys that were raised in Pentecostal Church of God, my, my family and guys, you've heard the stories. We didn't have anything but three beans, and we were cutting those up with a knife, and someone brought us groceries. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to be that guy. Well, you'll never learn to trust the Lord. Maybe. I, I don't know. I just don't want to be that guy. And so it's hard for me to walk away from what I know I can do. Right. Yeah. I know how much money I can make. Yeah. I do. Yeah. If I need to go make money, I can go make money. Never had a problem with that. I can't. But hear me for a second, please. But when I do that, I take control of that yeah, out of God's hands and I put it in my hands and it's never enough. You know why? Because I can't bless it like God blesses it. And I can't multiply it like God multiplies it. And I take it out of covenant. I take it out of covenant and I take it and I, and I remove it from the covenant of God. And so the blessing of Abraham is not on it because I've removed it. But as a man, I just say a male, as a man. I'm supposed to fix stuff. Right. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm supposed to take care of that lady back there singing to those kids back there. Amen. I'm supposed to take care of these kids right here, sitting in, not kids, whatever, my children. I'm supposed to take care of them. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be their El Shaddad because I am their supplier. Yeah. No. I need to teach them that sometimes El Shaddad has to give over to El Shaddai. And they will never learn to trust El Shaddai as long as El Shaddad is meeting their needs. Frankie taught me that. I learned something at your house the other day. And I'm working on it. It's hard for me. All I've ever done is work. So I know how to do it. work. I didn't want my kids to suffer. I didn't want to get made fun of at school because they had the wrong clothes. I, I grew up here. I went to seminar. I'm just telling you how, how life is in some way. Tradition never graduates, and that doesn't either. Exactly right. Okay? 
I'm just letting you know. Hear me for just a second. I'll, I'll quit. I promise I'll quit. It's hard for me, Sister Paula, to not be El Shaddai. I've been El Shaddai all their life. All our married life, since Abby was three months old, my wife has been a stay-at-home mother, and I'm so thankful that she's been able to do that. That's all she ever wanted to be was a mom, and she's a good mom. And I just, but she's been able to stay at home and be mother. Was it hard? Well, yeah. I worked at Wrangler. I thought I was making a lot of money. Oh, yeah, well, we're rocking it, man. We're, oh, we're rocking it. I found out there's life outside of Wrangler. I could make it two days when I was making it a week at Rome. Mm -hmm. And a God thing. A God, it was absolutely a God thing. Amen. God opened the door and made a job when that job didn't exist yeah. for me. Yeah. He, he made it for me and gave it to me. Yes. That job did not exist until I needed it. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You mean to tell me that I can't? And then, here's the paradox. God did that for me. And I still have a hard time saying, yeah, but God, I own this. Yeah. <laughs> I blame David because he was my youth pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and so, he, now, you know, just, I, I have a hard time that God would make a job for me that's been there for 19 years. I've been doing the same job for 19 years. Lord. I've driven up and down Highway 99 so many times. I can do it with my eyes closed and drive with my feet. I, got, I mean, I, I know. I, I Listen, now I have to concentrate a little bit on the bridges. They, they, they made new bridges, so there's like three new turns. But still. <laughs> and I struggle. Can I just share my struggle? I struggle with handing over the keys to that. It's scary, man. It is so scary to know. If I hand over the keys to that. I don't know if I can deal with that, Tim. <laughs> it's out of my control. I'm like, oh. I'm sorry that I'm just being transparent and real. And I know you guys have never struggled with any of that stuff. And you guys are just walking, you just float two feet off the ground because you're so spiritual. God loves you. Y'all just pray for me that I'll get where you're at someday. <laughs> Here's the deal though. It's easy to preach. It's hard. It's easy to preach. But when you have five people in your house depending on you, yeah. Come on now. Come on. to get up every day. Sick or not. Sick or not. Oh, yeah. Coughing and spitting, limping. Amen. Doesn't matter. When you work for yourself, there are no days off. Right. There is no they. You are they. They need to get somebody to help you. Uh, I'm they. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And so, there is no they. It's me. And me alone. Hear me not quit. Guys, I want to know where are you today? Are you in covenant or are you out? It's fantastic to be saved. It's the best, it's the, that's the best thing in the world. Yeah. Say, I'm safe. I'll leave. But are you in covenant? Have you given your life to God? Right. Have you given it? Stand here for your feet.